My name is Koi Duong, and for the next 10 minutes or so, I'll go through some of the cool things you can do in the latest 2022 general release. If you don't already know, our general release is now available to be downloaded on our website. And to keep up with the latest new events, the best thing to do is to sign up on our website, enable us to send you information, and that way, when something new comes out, you'll be notified. Alternatively, you can follow it on social media like LinkedIn or YouTube, subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel here, and you'll also be up to date on new events and when new videos are coming out. All right, so without any further delay, grab a coffee and let's get started. The first new feature will speed up the workflow like history matching by quickly identifying the select blocks that are within the drainage radius of a well. In the past, this was done manually and it's a very, very tedious process. Now, if you need to alter or change the properties to mimic near wellbore conditions or new wellbore damage, you can now easily identify the blocks within the draining range of the well. Then easily select them and change the properties or group into a custom group to be studied later. Furthermore, you can also use these modified group in CMOS and allow them to go through the full study of all different parameters, all different range within the SEMO study. Staying with our wells, our well perforations, the definitions are now much more robust and simple to use. In the past, the well perforation were defined by blocks UBA or the universal block address. Now this works fine until you need to do something to change the well um, the grid or move the well board to different locations. When this happens, you have to redefine all the perforations. And that works fine, unless you have hundreds and hundreds of wells. Imagine having to redefine all the perforation of your hundreds of wells. Now, in the new feature, well perforations are defined on starting MDs and ending MDs. That's your measure depths. If you define these two, the simulator will automatically define the perforation between those two points. Alternatively, you can also define your perforations by the XYZ coordinate of the individual perforations itself. Now, this new feature is really useful for studies that involve well spacing or well positioning, changing complexities of the grid, different grid size sensitivities, and grid refinements. All these can be done without having to redefine and re-update the wells. Next, we'll move into the unconventional space and how we can better model and understand fractures, specifically propped and unpropped zone of a fracture. Our latest prop region option will allow you to model fractures with bi-directional conductivity gradients in both the vertical and the horizontal directions. This improves upon our previous feature and will allow you to proper modeling of the propping effects where conductivity can change as you move away from the ejection point. This will add on to how we model and understand hydraulic factors, give you a big, better and bigger picture of what hydraulic factors is about. Now, speaking of propent, we now have a proper transport model that can model behaviors such as confine, convection, gravitational settings, and lateral leak off and stress shadow. These are all important in how we model propent and proper transport. Additionally, particle effects such as collision, blocking, packing and crashing are also being modeled to give a full picture of where the problem is going, what is happening to your problem, and what are the effects of the reservoir itself. Proper modeling can now be done without any limitations, like presetting the half lengths, unloading and reloading data, or involve complexities and runtime of a geomechanical model. With IMEX, we have added features to help you better understand and model polymer behaviors in a polymer flood. First, you now can model and study rock-based polymer adsorption within IMEX. This is an add-on feature from the previous permeability-based option and provides an extra layer of flexibility, as well as improved compatibility with the outputs of some of the third-party simulators out there. Additionally, to improve the modeling of fluid properties, such as that of polymer, IMEX can now solve the thermal energy conservation model and temperature effects on both viscosities and other thermally induced reservoir physics. For example, in polymer projects, you now can consider both the temperature effects of viscosities as well as the temperature effects on the degradation of the polymer. 
once again give you a bigger and more complete picture of what polymer injection involves and some of the complexity involved with polymer injection. Now, continue on with the thermal world, we have automated the geothermal workflow in a process wizard. Process wizards are guided tasks that help in simplifying the steps of building complex simulation models. As you can see here, we have guided tasks for anything from ASP to foam injection to asphalt team. We now have geothermal in this list. For geotherm, we have various options and setup you can choose from. And the process will walk you through the geothermal workflows, including putting to surface, PVT fluid, changing the well perm, thermal properties of both the reservoir and the well, and well configurations. Is it open? Is it closed? Is it closed with a single U shape or is it closed to the annulus and the casing? Do you have one well injecting another well? Various settings out there, we could all help you set it up in a quick and easy way with our process wizard. Another new feature that will make your simulation much easier is Pi Control. You already know that you can use Python scripts to do well controls within CMG. And Pi Control is a much easier way to facilitate the external control of all three of our simulators. It is an editor environment that allows people to easily access the data available in a simulator. The editor allows the user to concentrate on the script they want and not worry about the rest of the process involved in linking the script to the reservoir simulators themselves. User can now easily write their own controls to use in the well and recurrent section, and each simulator can scan a data file group such as sector and well completion layer information and make that available to Pi Control. Much easier way to access all the data than it was before. All right, so now you have your model set up and running. Have you ever worried about slow runtime or if your numerical setting has been optimized for this one process? Well, you worry no more. We have had AutoTune, our proprietary numerical optimization engine available for quite a few years now. But this year we continue to improve and make it that much better. We have improved the AutoTune in all three of our simulators to improve runtime or requiring very minimal input from the actual users themselves. Essentially, you gotta just turn it on or turn it off. That's all the input you need to do. Now, AutoTune can also be used in conjunction with Cognitive Solver to improve instabilities and has a substantial reduction in runtime in many of our thermal runs. Well, I wanna thank you for staying here. And if you have any questions, there are many of my colleagues and probably including myself walking around the booth. Please grab on us in chat. We're more than happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you again.